What's going on everyone? Thanks for checking out this video. Today I'm going to show you what I think is the next stage in electric mobility. This is the Bandit from Spark Cycle Works. And I know electric bicycles have grown in popularity a lot lately, but there's a couple reasons why I think this electric moped from Spark is the next stage in evolution. The first reason is the speed and power capabilities of the Bandit with a 52 volt battery, 40 amp controller, and a 2000 watt geared hub motor. This thing could hit 35 miles an hour, no problem. That's pretty hard for a lot of electric bicycles to do. Now, one other big thing that sets the Bandit apart from the rest is when you buy this from Spark Cycle Works, they're going to give you a bill of sale, a manufacturer's certificate of origin, and the Bandit's going to have its own VIN number. So you could take this to the DMV and register it as a vehicle. Now, although 95% of their customers don't do that, if in the future regulations get a little bit tighter, start getting enforced more, you could take this to the DMV, register it, plate it, and ride it on the streets 100% street legal good peace of mind to have. Now let's take a look at some of the features of the Bandit up close. All right, folks, we're checking out the Bandit. This is an electric moped from Spark Cycle Works, and this is made in the USA. These are hand-built, two customer specifications in Connecticut. If you go on the website, I believe the base model of the Bandit starts around $29.95, and then they have a build a Bandit section where you can further customize the bike to your liking. So you can change things out, like get a different headlight, you can have a single headlight, different handlebars, they have dual battery options, so you can have extended range, different tire packages, and there's also ways to raise and lower the Bandit. So you can get a tall seat, which will increase the seat height by three inches, or they make a short rear suspension that'll actually take it down, I think an inch and a half. So it's a highly customizable bike. I think they have a couple other options too, like a rear rack, if you need to carry some cargo, and I'm pretty sure they make a uh, beefier rear swing arm that if you want to put a really high powered motor in the rear wheel, you can get that heavy duty steel swing arm to be able to hold that motor in place. And they've been building the Bandit since about 2018. So if you're looking for more of a specialty electric vehicle that you can really customize and make your own, it should be a great option. I want to mention too that the, all the lighting is on a 12 volt accessory circuit. So any motorcycle lighting will work on this Bandit as well. All right, now let's take a quick look at some of the basic specs and then we'll take it for a ride and I'll show you what she can do. And excuse some of the blemishes on this bike. It's been shipped around to a couple different folks to take a look at. So it's got a few scrapes and nicks on it. But up front, you've got the V white wall tires. These are the V Speedsters, 20 by four tire, very slick and fast rolling. You're gonna be on the streets. This is a great tire fast rolling and it's super quiet. Can't hear this bike coming at all. The front wheel is not a quick release. It is a through axle. You've got upside down or inverted front forks. I'm not a suspension expert. I believe that has to do with better handling and less unsprung weight, but somebody can correct me in the comments if I'm incorrect there. On this side, I'll show you that you've got disc brakes, hydraulic disc brakes, and there are 203 millimeter, both front and rear. You got a lot of stopping power on the Bandit. It actually reminded me of riding my motorcycle where you've got 70% of your braking force in the front brake. This is kind of feels the same. You pull that front brake, it's got a lot of bite. Complete lighting package on the Bandit as well. I'm gonna turn everything on for you. Here's your button cluster. Horn is super loud, but we'll turn on both turn signals and headlights so you can see what that looks like. Super bright, dual headlights, and the turn signals are uh, sequential, I guess I think is what you call that. Really cool looking turn signals. Not self-canceling, you do have to cancel it yourself. But the neat thing is the back of it actually lights up blue when it's on, you can see that or not. So if you kind of glance down, you'll see that it's blue and you remember that you left it on. But really cool lighting on this front and rear turn signals and a force tail light and brake light as well. So you got all your lights keeping you DOT legal if you need to be. Now this bandit's got BMX style bars on it. You can get different handlebar options. Here is the display screen. I'm not sure if you can see, I can put up a better picture of it. Gives you all the information you need. Very nice looking display. Both button clusters here, all for your lighting and horn, and this is to control the display. The display's kind of locked down. I did try to monkey with some of the programming, and they can they kind of lock it down at the controller. There's not a whole lot you can change in the display, like the screen brightness and things like that, but as far as output uh, from the controller and everything, that's all done inside the controller. You can't really fiddle with that. It is a 40 amp controller. For those of you who know the, what that means, that's pretty legit. So 52 volt battery, 40 amp controller, going back to this 2000 watt motor. This is a lot of power. This is what electric bicycles strive to be. <laughs> There's not many of those out there with this much power. 35 miles per hour on this bike, 
all day long and it has no trouble keeping up in 35 mile an hour or less traffic you've also got this huge front chain ring to kind of give you some pedal feel at the higher speeds although i mean i really didn't pedal this much at all you just end up using throttle it's got a thumb throttle on your right hand that's the throttle setup and you got seven mechanical gears but like i said i mean people that are going to buy the bandit are probably just going to throttle only around most of the time and you got a decent sized battery pack this is a 25 amp hour battery pack and there are upgrade options where you can get dual battery packs they have a mounting plate and you can put another battery right here they also sell a battery blender to help you combine the batteries this is really kind of a moped that's meant for customization really easy to get to things all the wiring controller and everything are all inside this box right here i can open this up and show you a picture of what's inside there's also some extra space in here if you want to upgrade to a larger controller in the future they gave you room to do that very customizable bike and also inside that box if you take that plate off that's where your vin number is stamped so if you're looking for your vin it's in there over here you can see we got the blue rear suspension i believe this is an upgrade one of the one of the few upgraded items on this bandit these blue shocks i think they come with like black and gold or black and silver standard you can customize the color of your rear shocks they're air shocks i really didn't monkey with them a whole lot they're set up pretty stiff right now i probably could change that a little and just below it here you can see the mounting points for your passenger pegs which come with the bandit as well but i just didn't put them on you got your big old 2000 watt motor hiding in there and you can see it's reinforced with these steel plates these are your uh torque arms so that's going nowhere that's going to stay in your dropouts and i think that is most of the basics this is uh, about 92 pounds of weight about 82 to take the battery out and the minimum seat height is 33 and three quarters just about 34 inches from the ground to the top of that seat but now let's take this thing for a ride and i'll show you what the performance is all about all right first things first let's check the top speed the pedal to get going and then we'll just lay on the throttle hopefully you can see that speed 31 32 wow very heavy headwind 34 35 36 36 on the flat now a little bit of a downhill 37 38 39 if i tuck it right hit 40 holding at 39 that's plenty fast great top speed holy cow all right well as you can see great speed out of the bandit 36 on the flat no problem no problem at all i weigh 180 pounds and uh, hit that little bit of a downhill and you get close to 40. if i was on a bigger downhill you could definitely hit 40 even if i would have tucked down i didn't want to do that and mess up the camera angle but definitely a 40 mile an hour electric moped keeps up in traffic very nicely and honestly this is one that i rode mostly in traffic i didn't really feel like i wanted to take this on the greenway a whole lot it feels out of place there it feels more vehicle ish i'll say than it does bicycle ish so i'm going to keep it on the streets and what else can i tell you about riding the bandit all right so first off ride position i'm kind of my arms are kind of stretched out but in my legs i don't get you know full leg extension to pedal but i honestly don't care about that at all i'm using mainly throttle it's pretty maneuverable um, and it's it's not uncomfortable in terms of you don't feel cramped on it it feels like there's a lot of room to move back and forth on this seat the seat is really long so you got plenty of room i don't feel cramped on it any the seat's a little hard and kind of thin so on a really long trip you might get kind of tired of the seat you could always change that and make it wider or softer even if you got the tall seat you'd have more you know plushness more squish to it it'd probably be a lot softer and acceleration wise it's not crazy acceleration from a stop All right if i hit this it's kind of a gradual takeoff it's nothing crazy it's not gonna you know put you on the ground where it gets punchy is after you're already moving like this and then you hit it it kind of you hear it really kick in and jump so it gets kind of punchy as you're moving it's got a harder kick when you're going 20 and you hit the throttle than it does off the line you can see it kind of kick in there and then great 
stopping power. You got a ton of stopping power. You really feel the 203 rotors. I don't know if I've had a bike before with 203 rotors on it, and you really notice it. I think maybe one other bike, but you really notice the bite on the front brake. It stops on a dime. And you need that when you've got this much speed and power. So it's got a punchy throttle kick after you already get moving, which is really when you want it. You want to be rolling and hit the throttle and be able to scoot through traffic. And man, it just got really windy. Woo. But let's take this turn. I have noticed that the, the steering, when you try to do a sharper turn, it kind of wants to fight you a little bit. I can't quite describe the feeling, but it's just a little bit heavier steer when you get into a tighter turn. And I think that's the tires because they've got that really slick center spot and then on the edges of the tire it's grippier. I think that's what that is. I think the grip is catching when you do the tighter turn and it just it feels a little heavier in the steering. But overall, really easy to ride. Now, I'm very comfortable on this Bandit. I'm six feet tall. I got plenty of room. I don't feel cramped at all. I do have some footage of me, you know, pedaling the bike so you can see what the ride position looks like. It's, I mean, you can pedal. It's not gonna be something you're gonna put a whole lot of pedal effort into. I don't think it's really made for that. It's made to use the throttle and ride it around like an electric moped, right? And I didn't really use the pedal assist at all. Not at all. I kept it in pedal assist zero the entire time and just rode this Bandit with just the throttle. If you got into a situation where you had to pedal at home, you ran out of battery, something broke, you could. I found if you stand up and pedal, it's, it's easier to get things going and you could make it home. You could get it home, it would be heavy, you wouldn't like it, you'd be out of breath. <laughs> but you can pedal it if you need to, but mainly throttle only. And I'll show you why I rode like that. Okay, we're in pedal assist zero and you've got throttle, right? So you don't have to have the pedal assist on to have throttle. When I put it into pedal assist one and I start pedaling, it just gives me all the power and we're going, I'm not pushing, I'm just turning the pedals. We're going 20. Pedal assist one takes you to 20 miles an hour. Now pedal assist two, I'm gonna bump it up. Pedal assist two, it kicks in harder. And now we're going 25, 26, 26. And pedal assist two, most of the time I'm riding, I'm just kind of leisurely going around the neighborhoods. I don't need to be going 26 miles an hour the whole time, or even 20. So I just kept it in zero, so I can use the throttle as needed and just kind of turn my legs as needed. I asked Spark about this and said, you know, can I back those settings down? I don't want pedal assist one to be 20 miles an hour. And they basically said, well, that's the way we set it up is pedal assist one is you, that's a class one e-bike, you know, 20 miles an hour. Pedal assist two takes you to class three at 28 miles an hour. And then, you know, pedal assist three and up, just all bets are off. You're getting pretty much all the juice out of this thing. So there's not really any changing that. I think they told me you could increase the pedal assist levels to like nine levels. And that might back pedal assist level one down to like 18 miles an hour. But unfortunately, you're not gonna be able to put this, you can't customize those pedal assist settings to get a low speed. This thing is just, it's just got the speed. <laughs> it's got the power. And honestly, truthfully, I think anyone that's buying this is not really gonna care about that. But I just thought it was interesting to me. So if you are that person who wants to ride this at a low speed, you're not gonna be able to do it in pedal assist. You're gonna have to just thumb throttle it like me. This thing is super fun. I mean, if you want the speed and the power, this has definitely got it. I mean, I mean, 30 miles an hour, 35 even, with no problem. Great brakes to bring you to a stop. It's got those slick tires on it, so when you really hit the brakes, you get the squeal. <laughs> All the feast speedster tires do that. But this thing really is a sharp looking little machine. And again, highly customizable. There's so many options, not only with Spark offering the options, but I'm sure you could do a lot of aftermarket stuff to this if you wanted with larger motors and 72 volt battery systems. This is really, I think, the customization person's dream to have this, let me look at all this space here to do stuff. I mean, that's a lot of real estate to really have fun with this. And I really do feel like this is the next stage. The e-bikes e are fun. The bicycle ones are fun, uh, but they are still bicycles. This is more, like I said, more vehicle. It feels substantial on the road. I mean, you feel planted on the road. You can make it street legal and plate it and insure it and register it and all that stuff if you had to. 
So I really think this is one that's gonna capture the attention of people like me who rode motorcycles for 20 years and now they're looking for another fun, low speed option, lighter weight. I love riding these things. I still ride my motorcycle, but I spend more times on the electric vehicles now. You, just, you can just take it more places. I think that's why it's so much more fun. I don't really wanna take my 500 pound motorcycle through an empty field. I can do that on this, no problem. So that's kind of a little bit about, what else do you guys wanna know about this? Drop in the comments. I'll do my best to answer for as long as I've got this bike in my possession. And we gotta do one other thing too, I forgot. Before we leave, we gotta go test this thing on a hill. I know you guys wanna know how it does with hill climb power. I mean, you can see it's got power for days. You're not gonna have any trouble with any hills, but we're gonna go do the test though, just to show you. Downhill speed test. 43, 42, 43, not bad. Now there's one other thing to notice about this bike. I'm just gonna coast. Silent, totally silent. You don't hear these tires at all. This bike is so quiet, love it. All right, let's give it a go. Three, two, one, go. Oh yeah, good feel. It's slow off the line, but it'll probably build speed okay here. But I mean, no pedaling at all, just throttle only. It's gonna climb this hill with ease. Yeah, I can just feel it constantly building speed. Getting 92 pounds, motivated off the line, up a hill is just tough for it, but respectable time, I'm sure. I don't know even where to, where to guess that, but no problem climbing hills. And then you add in pedaling, it's just gonna make even that much easier, so. I don't have a problem with the hill climb power on the Bandit. It's perfectly adequate. All right, so that was a little bit about the Spark Cycle Works Bandit. Is this the next phase in electric mobility? Let me know and let Spark know what you think about the Bandit in the comments section. Thank you to Spark for giving me a chance to try the Bandit. Had a lot of fun riding this thing. I'll of course put a link to it below so you can find it easily and research it more if you'd like. I'll also include any discount codes that they give me in the description below. Hopefully you enjoyed this video, found it informative, helpful, at least entertaining. If you did, consider coming back for more. And that's all for today. Thanks for watching.